does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask what does he bring for me roses or books if someone has a stake in making you better that person will push you towards books books are what we all need namaste acharya ji before we even jump into the connection of vedanta with um, you know animal rights or veganism before that i wanted to understand is that personally what is the connection between vedanta and india bharat well you see vedant is uh, the culmination of uh, the philosophy of the vedas hmm? so the vedas uh, are encyclopedic in nature they talk about a lot of things hmm? their topmost philosophical content is known as vedant hmm? so the vedas originated in india so vedanta is a is a very much home grown philosophy of the soil that's a relationship between vedant and territorial india and uh, if we talk of india the living conscious entity then vedant is the root from which all the philosophical systems uh, in some way or the other take their nutrition so we have uh, had so many streams of thought in india we have had uh, religions sects and their branches and so much else uh, but the undeniable fact is that all of that um, finds its inspiration in vedant in fact it would not be an exaggeration to say that uh, there can be no spirituality without vedant vedant talks of and addresses such a simple and fundamental issue that you cannot uh, avoid it if you want to live in truth if you are someone who wants to understand life Hmm. so that's right. vedant for uh, beginners super um ajara ji if yeah that's what i was asking um that is beautiful that's almost like sanatan dharma right the eternal principles of life where that is the foundation mm. uh, and how old is this belief system in india are there any trace and then like can we trace it first of all it is not a belief system hmm? religions okay. are belief systems vedant is extremely exploratory in nature it does not really hmm. ask you to believe in anything hmm? it carries no dogmas it carries no fables no stories you really don't need to posit anything assume anything or take anything for granted that's the uh, that's the fundamental beauty of vedant experiential in nature not even experiential because even experience depends on the experiencer therefore all experience is in some way uh, subjective and therefore flawed and open to questioning what you experience might be very different from someone else does or what i do right we yeah. the, the three yeah. of us might have the same object in front of us yet our experience with respect to the object might be entirely different so therefore experience too cannot be taken as the truth hmm? this is the level of uh, rigor uh, at which vedant operates it goes right to the experiencer to the entity um, that says i Hmm? i live i feel i sense i say i think 
and questions it who is that entity from where does it come how much trustworthiness does it have yeah? that's vedant beautiful um yes uh, there is a saying aham brahmasmi so i am that i am and does that also mean that you know it is us who reincarnate again and again and that is in different form uh, yeah yeah before we move ahead i just uh, forgot to answer the second part of your question how old is uh, vedant you see uh, yeah uh, uh, if i talk of uh, the upanishads specifically hmm? Yeah. Uh, which are the um, the cornerstone of vedant vedant consists of upanishads the bhagavad gita and brahma sutra and out of these three uh, the upanishads are the fundamental then the oldest upanishads you could say were um, written um, composed around um, well um, around 4000 years back and from Mm, that time onwards it has been a continuous stream right so there are upanishads then that were mm, composed uh, 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 before the buddha then there are upanishads that uh, were composed in the in the buddha stage then there are upanishads that have been uh, uh, composed uh, in the christ era and the most recent of the upanishads are well uh, no more than a thousand years old so so that's the chronology it's not uh, one particular book the upanishads hmm? these are yes. these are ha huh, these are parts uh, these are excerpts from the bodies of the vedas to some upanishads have an independent existence also but it's uh, but they their their genesis is spread over a vast stretch of time yeah Please. Very interesting. So, what is the relationship between this, uh, these Upanishads, the Danta itself, with veganism or with just animalism? Yes. The relationship is extremely deep, eh? very organic, and uh, these uh, two things, spiritual understanding and veganism, are actually inseparable. you see when the when the when the uh, upanishads or when when vedant asks the question who am i hmm? then after removing all the fluff and all the falseness one comes to see that one is the consciousness that is asking this question one is the experiencing entity hmm? and uh, if if you have heard uh, acharya shankar's famous uh, nirvan shatkam then yeah. there he continuously negates what one is not hmm? i am not air i am not water i am not the body i am not the past i am not the future i am not this i am not that hmm? so who am i then i am i am consciousness and i am <clears throat> consciousness that must be um, purified to the maximum extent possible hmm? i am asking this question who am i because the consciousness that i am suffers it suffers because it is impure it is impressionable it is contaminated so consciousness has to be respected it has to be kept pure if consciousness has to be respected then consciousness in all forms has to be respected you see my suffering as an individual is because my consciousness has not received the kind of attention and respect from me that it deserved right if i really want to be free from suffering that i have to respect consciousness and if i have to respect consciousness then how can i deny that the consciousness of the animal in front of me is not very different from my own <laughs> that the animal suffers in much the same way as i do 
there also has to be then a level at which a person starts identifying with consciousness of self you know that's like the first step because a lot of people cannot go beyond the physical and understandably so i think yes 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 you see so that's the would... that's the trouble with uh, living in the physical the more you live in the physical the more you destroy the physical you see when we say somebody is uh, is, is very body identified it appears that that person would be taking care of the body a lot or would be taking care of the material aspects of the life a lot uh, well that's not really the case when you mm. are too attached to the body when you are too identified to material stuff you find that you destroy even the material stuff for example you look at the environmental crisis today you look at the climate crisis all that is 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 destruction on a material dimension Hmm? because man loves material and therefore he is creating havoc in the dimension of the material hmm? the earthly dimension the trees the rivers the mountains everything that is material is being destroyed hmm? so even to let material stay in a healthy shape one has to have a certain detachment from material and that detachment from material can only come when you first of all identify yourself not as material primarily hmm? having a material dimension all right but not material at the core but consciousness at the core and when you are consciousness at the core you cannot avoid admitting that the that the glint in the eye of the chicken or the goat is not very different from the light in your own eye how can you then um, proceed to slaughter uh, the little thing very difficult i mean it's also like having non having non ownership right so i don't own this material i don't own this body i don't own that life form i uh, just identifying consciousness as it is or what people sometimes call the creator if if one has any link to that and whatever name that they call it uh, is when they start getting more sensitized to all beings all living forms around and i think animals are just one part of it is that what you mean you see there is me and there is the material world and there is a relationship between the two when i do not know who i am then the relationship between me and the material world and the material world consists of animals inanimate things persons Hmm? consumable goods everything then the relationship between me and the world gets totally distorted hmm? and obviously uh, i suffer and i make the world suffer right so a person who is uh, cruel towards animals is actually quite uh, likely to be inconsiderate and insensitive towards uh, his or her loved ones as well because that but they might not even know it right they, they might, might not, not even know it. it but then you know it, it's it's like it's like the virus you may not know that uh, you have uh, the virus but the effects will be there for you to experience and for everyone else to see and uh, the suffering might not be Mm, uh, just personal to you if you have the virus then you cause suffering all around and um, according to the vedic philosophy isn't that that we are insensitive to our own selves because like you said earlier on it yes. all starts with knowing yourself yes. so if you respect yourself you by default respect another by default yes. respect well said in fact i have been emphasizing on this since a long time that uh, if you are being considerate towards animals then it is not even a purely selfless thing for your own good please be sensitive to other conscious beings other sentient beings because if you are not good to them what it means is that you are not good to life itself and you too are life if you do not know how to respect the the physical integrity the very existence of an animal you 
really do not know how to have even self-respect. 